Welcome, I am Teacher Tommy, and this is the Behavior Modification Book Reading Lecture. I won't be reading the whole book, I'll be reading the important parts of the book. This is Part 1, the Introduction, Chapter 1. Chapter 1, the Introduction. There are 30 chapters total. <clears throat> 30 chapters total. We go start with what is behavior. That's what I'm going to start. Before we can talk about behavior modification, we must first ask, what do we mean by behavior? Some commonly used synonyms to include activity, action, performance, responding, response, and reaction. Essentially, behavior is anything that a person says or does. Technically, behavior is any muscular, glandular, or electrical activity of an organism. Is the color of someone's eyes behavior? Is blinking behavior? Are the clothes someone is <coughs> wearing behavior? Is dressing behavior? If you said no to the first and third questions and yes to the second and fourth, we are in agreement. One of the goals of this book is to encourage you to begin thinking and talking very specifically about behavior. How about getting an A in behavior modification course or losing 10 pounds? Are those behaviors? No, those are products of behaviors. The behavior that produces an A is studying effectively. The behaviors that lead to weight loss are resisting, overeating, and exercising more. Walking, talking out loud, throwing a baseball, yelling at someone are all overt, visible behaviors. Overt means visible. Visible behaviors that could be observed or recorded by an individual other than one performing the behavior, as well as discussed in later chapters of the term behavior it is referred to as covert. Covert means private and internal. Covert, private and internal activities that cannot be readily observed by others. All behavior is potentially observable. However, private or covert behaviors do not typically refer just to behaviors done in private, such as undressing in one's bedroom with the door locked, and the blinds closed, nor usually does it refer to secretive actions such as cheating on exam. Rather, in the field of behavior modification, they commonly refer to activities that occur within one's skin, and that therefore require special instruments or procedures for others to observe. For example, just before stepping into the ice, at an important convention competition, a figure skater might think, I hope I don't fail, fall. And he or she is likely to feel nervous, increased heart rate, etc. Thinking and feeling are private behaviors that are discussed in chapters 15, 27, and 28. Covert as well as overt behaviors are influenced by the techniques of behavior modification. Sometimes we think words called private or self-talk as illustrated by a figure skater in the previous paragraph. At other times we think imaging, if I were to ask you to close your eyes and imagine a clear blue sky with a few white fluffy clouds, you would be able to do so. Imagining and private self-talk in addition to being 
called covert behaviors are sometimes referred to as cognitive behaviors. Techniques for dealing with cognitive behaviors are called cognitive behavior therapy discussed in chapter 27. Characteristics of behavior that can be measured are called dimensions of behavior, the duration of behavior, the length of time that the behavior lasts, Mary studied for one hour, the frequency of behavior, the number of instances of the behavior is in the given time period. Fred planted five tomatoes in the garden at 30 minutes. The intensity or force of behavior refers to the physical effort involved in admitting the behavior. Mary has a strong grip while shaking hands. Strategies for measuring dimensions of behavior are discussed in chapter 21. Test your knowledge. A quick quiz. What is behavior? Distinguish between behavior and the products of behavior. Distinguish between overt and covert behavior. What are cognitive behavior? And describe two dimensions of behavior. Answers. Behavior. Behavior is any muscular, glandular, or electrical activity of an organism. And behavior is, is an activity that produces results like Studying hard for an exam reduces the, produces the A on the exam. The A is the product. The studying is the behavior. Overt means observable. Covert means private. Cognitive behaviors are thoughts and feelings. Two dimensions of behaviors. One dimension of behavior is duration, length of time of behavior. Mary studied for an hour. Another example is the frequency of behavior. The number of instances in the given period of time of behavior. Fred planted five, plant, five tomato plants in 30 minutes. While we all have learned to talk about behavior in various ways, we often do in quite general terms. Words such as honest, carefree, hardworking, unreliable, independent, selfish, Incompetent, kind, graceful, unsociable, and nervous are summary labels for human actions, but they do not refer to specific behaviors. If, for example, you were to describe a man as nervous, others might generally know what you mean, but they would not know if you were referring to that person's tendency to chew his fingernails frequently, his constant fidgeting when sitting in a chair, the tendency for his eye to twitch when talking to someone of the opposite sex, or some other behavior. In later chapters, we will discuss ways to measure specific dimensions of behavior. Traditional helping specialists are not trained as behavior modifiers, often use general terms such as Intelligence, attitudes, and creativity. Behavior modifiers, on the other hand, talk more precisely about behavior. What do we mean when we say that the person is intelligent? To many people, intelligent, intelligence is something that a person is born with, with a sort of inherent brain power, innate capable of, and capable capacity of learning. But we never observe or directly measure any such thing. On an intelligence test, for example, we may simply measure people's behavior, their answers to questions as how they take the test. The word intelligent is to be used as an adjective form. He is an intelligent speaker. His speech is intelligent, or it's adverb. She writes intelligently. To 
describe how people behave under certain conditions, such as taking a test, not as a noun or something. Perhaps a person described as intelligent readily solves a problem that others find difficult, performs well on most course examinations, reads many books, talks knowledgeably about many topics, or gets a high score in an intelligence test. Depending on who uses the words intelligent, it can mean many or all of these things. Whatever it means, it refers to the ways, ways of behaving. Therefore, in this book, we avoid using intelligence as a noun. Noun is a person, place, or thing. For a discussion of behavioral approach to intelligence, see Williams, Merson, and Hale, 2008. Since we avoid intelligence as a noun, we use it as a verb, an action word. A noun is a person, place, or thing, something at rest that doesn't move or act. We use behavior as intelligence as a verb, an action, something that moves, something that is not a person, place, or thing. What about an attitude? Suppose that Jimmy's teacher, Miss Smith, reports that he has a bad attitude towards school. What does Miss Smith mean by this? Perhaps she means that Johnny frequently skips school, refuses to do his work when he does attend and swears at the teacher. Whatever she means when she talks about Johnny's bad attitude is clearly behavior which she is concerned. Creativity also refers to kinds of behavior that a person is most likely to display under certain circumstances. The creative individual frequently emits behavior that are novel or unusual and that at the same time have desirable effects. For an extensive behavior approach of creativity, see Mar 2003. Other psychological terms such as developmental disability discussed further in Chapter 2, autism, and so on, are labels for certain ways of behaving. They do not refer to invisible mental amoralities. How do psychologists and other helping specialists decide that someone has a developmental disability? They make a decision primarily because they might observe a person at a certain age. He cannot tie shoelaces. He is not toilet trained. He eats with fingers or a spoon. Performs a psychological test in such a way that combined answers yield to an IQ score, Q score of 75 or less. How do Specialists diagnose a child for showing autistic disorder. They make the discussion based on behaviors they observe. For example, they might observe a child frequently mimics particular questions rather answering with appropriate statement more generally shows impaired communication. One call does not respond, moves away from the person calling more generally shows impaired social behavior, engages in self-stimulatory behavior such as rocking back and forth, twirling objects and fingers with fingers or fluttering with hands in front of his eyes, performs much below average on a variety of self-care skills such as dressing and grooming and feeding. On the, on the summary of labels commonly used to refer to psychological problems include attention deficit, hyperdeficitity, disorder, anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, road rage, interpersonal difficulty, sexual dysfunction. Why are some terms or labels for these patterns of behavior so frequently used in psychology every day? First, they are useful for quickly providing general information about how the individual might perform. We expect about we expect that a ten year old who has been labeled as having a severe development disorder, for example, will not be able to read at a first grade level. Second, the labels that imply that a particular treatment program would be helpful. Some 
one with road rage might be encouraged to take anger management program. Someone who is unassertive might might benefit from a assertiveness training course. However, the use of many labels also has its disadvantages. One, that they may lead to persuigro explanations of behavior. Persuigro means false. For example, a child who averts words while reading, such as saw for waters, might be labeled as dyslexic. We, if we ask why the child averts words and we are given an answer because he is dyslexic, then the summary label the behavior is used as a persuigro explanation for behavior. Another name for a persuigro explanation is circular reasoning. A second disadvantage of labeling is labels can negatively affect the way an individual might be treated. Teachers, for example, may less likely likely to encourage children to persist in problem solving if they have been given the label of mentally retarded. Bloomfield, Bloomfield, Bloomfield and West, 1988, Bloomfield and Wises and Miser, 1986. After the disadvantage of labeling is that it may direct the focus of an individual's problems and behaviors rather than on his or her strengths. Suppose, for an example, that a teenager constantly fails to make his bed and reliably mows the lawn and places the garbage cans on the street for pickup. Pickup days, the parents describe a son as lazy, and that label may cause them to focus more on the problem behavior than to praise the positive behaviors. In some societies, racial minorities have been given negative label lazy even when they were the ones doing most of the hard physical work in the societies. In this book, we strongly stress the importance of defining all types of problems in terms of behavioral defects, too little behavioral or a particular type, behavioral excesses, too much behavior of a particular type. We do this, we, we do so for several reasons. First, we want to help you to avoid problems using the general summary labels discussed earlier. Second, regardless of the labels attached to the individual, the behavior that causes concern and the behavior that must be treated to alleviate the problem. Certain behaviors that parents see and hear or fail to see and hear cause them to seek professional help for children. Certain behaviors teachers see and hear prompt them to seek professional help for students. Certain behaviors that can be seen and heard cause governments to set up institution, clinical clinics, community treatment centers, and social programs. A certain behaviors that you omit might cause you to embark on a self-improvement program. Third, Specific procedures are not available that can be improved behavior in schools and workplace and home setting. In fact, just about every, every just about anywhere, there needs to establish a more desirable behaviors. The techniques referred to as collective as behavior modification. Quick quiz. From a behavioral point of view, what is intelligence or creativity? Give an example of such. What are three disadvantages of the summary label? What is a behavioral defect? What is a behavioral excess? What are behavior? Why do behavioral modifiers describe? Behavioral problems and specific behaviors of defects and excesses. Okay, here are the answers.
intelligence is a behavior as a verb, not a noun. It's the act of intelligence. Doing something the right way produces an efficient result. Studying for an exam, getting an A is a product of that behavior. Creativity, creative writing, writing a fictional story. The product of that is the fictional story. Disadvantages of summary label, Persigro explanations and circular reasoning. The wrong type of label may fit the wrong type of behavior. For an example, someone may be dyslexic for seeing the wrong word on the paper. Behavioral defect, L too much less of a behavior. Behavioral excess, too much of a behavior. Problems with behavioral um, modifiers and excesses and um, defects. If it's too much of a negative behavior, it attributes to a potential disability. If it's the right analysis, if it's too much of a positive behavior, it can be still a bad thing. Too, because it's not in moderation, according to health statutes. Okay. The most important characteristic of modification is a strong emphasis on defining problems in behavior that can be measured in the same way and using changes in the behavior measure. The problem is indicated the extent to which the problem has been helped. Okay. All right. So, all right. This was from page. This was from page. One, two, um, six. We left off at what is behavior modification. In this section of the video, it's going to end. The second video, part two, will be chapter one, page six and beyond, starting at what is behavior modification. Thank you for attending um, this lecture.